today on Steampunk Minecraft. The Andesite Factory. Not only does it produce andesite, but also andesite alloy, a metal we need for every machine and create. I also craft a powerful drill capable of breaking multiple blocks at a time. We're getting this year started with another episode of Steampunk Minecraft. You want to play mod packs with friends, but you can't seem to find a good server. And the free ones? With the big mod packs these days, free servers are just too laggy. Luckily for you, there's Bisect Hosting. They host my server, and with plenty of affordable options, they can host your server too. And the best part is, they support almost every mod pack. Use code DOUBLESAL at checkout for 25% off your first order. Bisect Hosting, a great site for great servers. The holidays are over, which means it's time to get back to work. Through its machines, the steampunk world is always moving forward. But it can't do that without andesite alloys. And how do you make andesite alloys with an andesite block? So logic dictates that we need an andesite factory. But where to put it? I also have a second problem I want to address. Pickaxes and axes. These tools are starting to look like baby toys. At this point, there's got to be something better that we can work with. And there is. A power drill, one that can break multiple blocks at a time. But to make this, I'm gonna have to do some heavy crafting because this machine requires a lot of parts. Even ingots, and all of my ingots were gone because I had updated the mod pack and the modded chests where I was storing them all, well, they were removed. So once again, I had to hop into the airship, fly around and look for a cave. I hovered around for a few minutes until I came across this ravine. Thanks to the blimp, I was able to descend directly to the bottom. It was a bumpy landing, but she held together. And after that, I began mining all the ores and gems I needed, as well as repelling the mobs that would just get in my way. So once I had what I needed, I went back to base. My next stop was the power station, where we had built a diesel generator. I was gonna need a lot of power to start smelting my ores. Once it was powered on, I went back to the workshop and started using the arc furnace, the ultimate furnace that could smelt multiple ores at a time. Not only could it melt them down, but it could also mix them. With this machine, I combined gold and silver to make Electrum, the required ingot for our power drill. And there it was. But I wasn't done yet. I had just crafted the base model. I still needed to make the drill head as well as some other add-ons that would make it more powerful. There were a couple of drill options, but I opted for steel as it was the strongest. The only way to actually apply these add-ons was at the engineer's workbench. There I was able to attach the drill head. After that, I crafted a large fuel tank and a couple of other add-ons that would make this the ultimate power drill. There was only one thing left to do, and that was to fuel it up. It ran on biodiesel, just like our generator. I put the drill into the refining machine where it sucked up all the fuel. With the power drill now fueled up, I decided to test it nearby and wow, this thing was gonna be very useful. I wanted to push it to its limits, so I found a nearby hillside and began flattening the terrain. I even contemplated if the area that I was working on could act as a potential site for our andesite factory. With this powerful tool, I thought to myself, why not? So I decided to take out the entire hillside. In no time, I was able to clear up a good chunk of this area. There were some holes in the ground that I had to patch up, but not too big of a problem there. I did have a ton of dirt in my inventory. This flat area was going to be the perfect spot for building anything that I wanted. Now the big question was, what was this andesite factory going to look like? I mean, how big was it going to be? I decided to hop over to my creative world to design something that would suit our needs. And after a lot of time building, I think it's safe to say I designed something that would be perfect for our world. I also incorporated new blocks that I had never used before, like the display board, but more on that later. Yes, we were going to take our engineering to the next level, and to transfer our world from creative to survival, I had the help of the trusty schematic cannon, a block that constructs your building for you. And of course the cannon needs a table, how else are we supposed to draft our plans? I imported the blueprints from the creative world, and after that I had to decide where I wanted to place this building. I set down a preview of the building onto the flat plane that I had just made with the power drill, though I didn't really like how it looked in that spot. The second option was the space that was used for our tree farm, though the tree farm could easily be relocated. I felt like I needed a building here, although I would have to demolish some things like Noah's Christmas tree, which he built on a live stream. Here's a clip from around that time in case you missed it. This gift is specially pertaining to you. I put a lot of thought into it, okay? It's gonna be a popular I am going to give you this light bulb because I think you're very bright. Aww. There you go. Oh, hey. What'd you get me? 
I got you a couple things. It's, it's kind of like a package deal, okay? So first, each... But Christmas is over, so the tree has to come down. And what better use of a spot full of cherished holiday memories than by placing down an industrial factory? I mean, that is the best way to get use out of the land. And besides, I wasn't doing anything with it. I put the bloopers into the cannon only to realize that it had no gunpowder. So I was gonna have to go on an expedition to get some. I used the four little pieces of gunpowder that I had left to make some bullets. With these supplies, I was gonna have plenty of gunpowder in no time. I flew around on the airship, hoping to find some nice gunpowder deposits. And that didn't take long. It turns out that there was a surplus of creepers in my area. What one would consider a curse, I considered a blessing. But killing creepers one at a time was taking way too long. Thankfully, I did have a tool that could help me remedy that issue. It only took a few minutes before I had more than enough gunpowder to power this cannon. The next step was to prepare all the materials that were going to go into the build. There were going to be a lot of logs, a lot of sandstone, and how exactly did I know what I was going to need? Well, the cannon made a list for me. Every item with the exact quantity. With the chest full of supplies right next to the cannon, it started doing its thing. You know you've made it in Minecraft when the blocks are building for you. Eventually, a foundation appeared, but I did have to start crafting some of the more unique additions to this build, like these futuristic sliding doors. They look like something you'd see in a space station. While I wasn't going to space just yet, I felt that these doors were the perfect fit for our andesite factory. We were finally transitioning to a more industrial, technological age, and it was time for our builds to start reflecting that. So I continued crafting new technologies like the display board. A block that, when powered, can display the names and quantities of an item, for example. I put these iron ingots on a depot. All I had to do now was to power the display board, and once it received that power, the name Iron Ingot was projected onto the board. Granted, the board did have to be a little longer, but it worked. There are so many useful applications for something like this. Because it updates in real time, you can even set it up to display train schedules. But today, we're just gonna use it to measure how many items we have in a chest. You can even customize it so that the letters appear in your favorite color. While I was experimenting with the display boards, the schematic cannon was making progress. And after a short while, it was finally done. The Andeside Factory was nearly complete. Another Acacia masterpiece. Keeping true to our steampunk style, this building was going to be powered by another hidden steam engine. And as you can see, there is the larger, glorious display board just waiting to get started. And of course, you cannot forget our futuristic sliding doors. Here on the upper level, you may notice that mounted on the walls are train pilots, or cow catchers, whatever you want to call them. I thought they looked really fancy, especially acting as light covers. Stashed away inside of the Andeside factory was a name tag. Now what was I going to do with this name tag? Well, obviously I was going to name something. I typed out the words Andeside Alloy, and I was going to right click those little Nixie tubes, you know, the little light bulbs displaying zero, well they can actually display letters as well, and they make the perfect steampunk signs. Once you right click them, the letters are displayed, and there you go. Anyways, an andesite factory needs lava. So I went to our little lava farm and started connecting pipes that would reach from the farm all the way to the factory. We also needed lava for a cobblestone generator because all great things start with a cobblestone generator. Now to some of the behind the scenes action. Behind this wall, you'll see the guts of the factory where all the real work happens. I'll go a little more in depth on that later. As you can see, the display board is working, although for some reason, I don't know why the upper line is more indented than the lower line. But when the letters reappeared, the upper line was still more indented. I did want the letters to pop out a little more, so I tried something new. I took some soul fire, threw in an ink sack, and watch. It turns into a glowing ink sack. I then took the glowing ink sack, right clicked the letters, and now they were glowing. That pops out way better than the dull white. I ended up dyeing the lower line blue, light blue to be specific, just to make the labels color-coded. With that task out of the way, I spent a little time working on the cosmetic side of this factory. The Andeside factory was finally incorporated into our steampunk village. Here's how the factory works. It all begins with the cobblestone generator. The cobblestone is made, it gets broken by the drills, and then it falls between a pair of crushing wheels. The blocks are ground up and turned into gravel, which can end up in one of two places. The first being a millstone, which will continue to ground up the gravel and turn it into flint. The gravel can also end up in a chest, which is also used to make andesite later. When the ingredients are pressed with lava, it makes an andesite block. The block then moves to a mixer where it's combined with iron nuggets. 
When the two items come together and are mixed, they produce an andesite alloy. The alloy then has one of two paths it can follow. They pass through a set of filters, which splits them off into two separate sections, with each section processing the andesite alloys a little differently. One option is for the andesite alloy to be combined with stripped logs. When the two items come together, they form an andesite casing. The alloys that aren't combined with the log are put into a vent and elevated to the second floor. In the end, both the alloys and the casings end up side by side, and for every item that goes into the chests, the display board automatically updates its quantity. Now there are some drawbacks, like the fact that I have to constantly supply this machine with iron nuggets. I mean, I could have made them with this method, but there's only a 12% chance to actually get the iron nugget and a 25% chance to get the flint. I really would rather just transfer the iron from the iron farm into the factory and just have the flint generated 100% with a millstone. Don't worry friends, we're almost done. There is one more thing I want to add to this factory before we wrap it up. I crafted wool, turned it into a painting, and with the painting I combined it with a crafting table. This generates a crafting blueprint. It's kind of like a painting, but way more useful. Now the big question, how exactly does a crafting blueprint work? And how can it help us here in our steampunk world? When you right-click it, you're greeted with an interface similar to that of a crafting table. And like a crafting table, you can put down the ingredients and it'll show you what you can make. The difference is that this one can actually memorize the recipes and leave them there for instant crafting. The blueprint then displays an image of the item you saved based on the crafting recipe you put down. If you have the items in your inventory, all you have to do is right-click it and there you go! You have instant crafting! Now the blueprints aren't an absolute must, but they do look nice and they save you a little bit of time. I figured they'd be nice to have since we can craft some of the more simple create mod items with the materials that we were making in the factory. It was finally time to get some practical use out of this andesite factory. With all of the stuff we were now able to make, I decided it was only appropriate to start upgrading something across the street, that being our iron farm. You see, the iron farm was great, but it did have some drawbacks as well, like the fact that it would only make nuggets and I would have to spend a lot of time combining the nuggets to make ingots. But with all of the materials we now had at our disposal, it was finally time to automate that process. With our newly crafted items fresh from the andesite factory, I began making some upgrades to the iron farm that were really way overdue. And yes, the process was slow. Very slow. But as long as the job was getting done automatically, it wasn't going to be a problem. With the nuggets being pressed into ingots, and I had to deal with the issue of getting them from the basin into a chest. So I set up a small conveyor belt system. And honestly, when it comes to create, this is as simple as it gets. Nothing too complicated, nothing too fancy, just a well-working machine that gets the job done. With the funnel attached to the chest, the items can now freely move from the basin onto the belt into their new storage space. And with that, I successfully upgraded the iron farm. It seemed like a pretty obvious thing to have, so I don't know why it took me this long until I decided to make an andesite factory. I mean, after all, like I said before, andesite is the fundamental block for almost all of the create blocks. Well, there you go, friends, the andesite factory. I hope you guys enjoyed today's video, and I look forward to a beautiful, prosperous 2024 with all of you as we continue to explore the wonders of steampunk Minecraft. Once again, if you enjoyed today's video, leave a like and let me know what you thought down in the comments below. And if you're new to the channel, consider subscribing for future content. You can also support me on Patreon, where I'm going to be uploading the schematics for these builds. Congrats, friends. We just made it to the first episode of 2024. Be sure to stick around because there is more coming your way. Thank you so much for watching. This has been Double Sound. I'll see you next time.